Okay, here's a solution to the final exam for Easy E320 Digital Electronics for Fall 2021. The first problem is a load line. Given the loop line and the circuit, draw the load line and find the solution. So to do that, uh, what I'll do is I'll first combine these two in parallel. R is your birth date. Um, assuming 15, 14 ohms, these two in parallel give you some resistance. Uh, the current then is voltage over R. That's the y-axis. When this is zero, short it out, I get voltage over R, 12.77 milliamps. That's the y-intercept. The x-intercept is when the current is zero. I have 11 minus i times R. 11 minus zero gives you 11 volts, x-intercept. Connect the two points, you get a straight line. Where it intersects your curve is your solution. Problem two is write the N equations and unknowns for a diode circuit. The first one is the voltage across the diode. This is your current as a function VD. For diode one, this is the voltage, V0 minus V1, anode to cathode. Diode two, anode to cathode, V2 minus V3. Diode three, anode to cathode, V1 minus V4. So those are the diode equations, plugging in the appropriate voltages. For the currents, at node 1, the current left, down, 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 has to add to 0. Current left is minus ID1 plus V1 minus V2 over 1K plus V1 minus V3 over 3K plus ID3 equals 0. At node 2, current up plus the current down equals 0. Current up is V2 minus V1 over 1K plus ID2, second equation. Node 3, current up, down, and right equals 0. That's minus ID2 plus V3 over R plus V3 minus V1 over 3K. And diode at node 4, current up plus current down equals 0. Minus ID3 plus V4 over 4K equals 0. Seven equations, seven unknowns. Problem three, assuming an ideal diode, now solve for the voltages and currents. So here the trick is to figure out which diodes are on or off. Diode one is probably on. I've got 10 volts across it. So this makes this 0.7 when it's turned on, making V1 9.3 volts. Um, I've got 9.3 volts across this diode. It probably turns on. So I lose another 0.7, making this 8.6 volts. Uh, let's assume this diode is on. In that case, this called this X, X plus 0.7. Again, this will be 0.7 volts if it's on. Now I have one equation, one unknown. Draw a supernode. The current going up, down, and right. The current leaving the supernode has to be zero. That gives you one equation, one unknown. X plus 0.7 minus 9.3 plus X over R plus X minus 9.3 over 3K equals zero. Solve, I get V3 is 5.86 volts. V2 is V3 plus 0.7, 6.5 volts. And then the current, ID1, is, well, probably easiest. It's V3 over R plus V4 over 4K. Those two together, current in equals current out. Uh, draw a super node looking like this. Current in equals current out. 6.026 milliamps. Problem four, AC to DC converter. Uh, V1 looks like this, it's got a peak and then discharges. The peak is 19.3 volts. That's your 20 minus 0.7 volts drop across the diode. Worst case, the current is 19.3 over 120 plus R, 11.8 milliamps. For this capacitor, I equals C dVdt, I know C, I know the current, I know the time, 160 to the second, solve for dV, and the voltage drop is 1.6 volts. The DC voltage then is the average. So it'll be the peak minus half the peak to peak, 18.48 volts. The peak to peak is your AC voltage at V1. So that's your V1. V2 then is by voltage division. It's gonna be R over R plus 120 times V1, 17.12. To find the AC voltage, 
the capacitors 1 over j omega c, uh, minus j442 ohms. Put these in parallel, I get 118 minus j407. By voltage division, R1 over R1 plus R2 times V1. Here's your V1. Gives you 0 0.372 volts peak to peak. That's an equals. Problem five, clipper circuit. Here it's first figure out where the diodes turn on. That's on the y-axis. Turns on at four volts and seven volts. So that's the zener voltages. Here's four volts. Here's seven volts, or 6.8 volts. 6.8 volts. Yeah, it's hard to draw the mouse. Okay, the gain then. Initially, the slope is 2.86. That's 1 plus R0 over 1K. Makes R0 1.86K. That does this part of the curve. The slope drops down to 1.12. That's my voltage divider. When this diode turns on, I get a gain of R1 over R1 plus R. R1 plus R. Uh, times 2.86. It's got to give me 1.12. Solve for R1. I get 974 ohms. Then the last part, slope is 0.393. The resistor is in parallel by voltage division times the op amp gives gain of 0.393. R12 is 241 ohms. That's R1 in parallel with R2. I know R1, solve for R2, makes R2 320 ohms. That's your clipper circuit. Problem six. Here is a transistor circuit. Find beta, draw the load line, and find the operating point. Beta is IC over IB. 100 over 5 is 20. 80 over 4 is 20. 60 over 3 is 20. The gain is 20. The load line. When the current is 0, I'm at 11 volts. 11 over 100 is 110 milliamps. There's the y-intercept. Connect the two, I get a straight line. The current IB, when Vn is 5 volts, I have 5 minus 0.7 over R. Uh, for my resistance, I get 2.84 milliamps, where the intersection load line is your operating point, right here. 5.3 volts, 56 milliamps. Problem 7. Design a Schmidt trigger so that it turns on at 1500 ohms, turns off at 1200 ohms, where this is your birth date. So starting out, uh, V1, I turn on by voltage division at 4.97 volts. I turn off by voltage division at 4.42 volts. So it looks like this. I turn on at 4.97. I turn off at 4.42. Positive correlation. As the voltage goes up, the output goes up. Connect with plus input. Where you turn on is your offset. The slope is the gain. Um, the output changes by 10 volts as the input changes by 0.5 volts, 18 to 1. Make this 18 to 1 ratio. For RB, uh, pick it so that the base current is bigger than 2 milliamps. Again, IC over beta is 2 milliamps. Bigger than 2, less than 25. I chose 9.3, anything between 2 and 25. Choosing 9.3 makes RB 1K. And then RC is 10 minus 3 volts across the diode, minus 0.2 volts across the transistor. Gives you 34 ohms. Problem 8. Here's trying to figure out which diodes are on, which ones are off. Uh, let's see. And yeah, I did this wrong. Um, when both of these are 2 volts, 3 volts, these two will be turned off, and the current goes right. Easiest path to ground, making this 1.4 volts. That will saturate this transistor, making the voltage 0.2. Uh, now, diode 2 is on. Current goes this way. Diode 5 is off. And 0.9 volts isn't enough to turn on two diodes. When it's off, this is 4.57 volts by voltage division. So the currents then, let's see, I gotta fix this. 
0.57. Um, I2 is 5 minus 0.7 minus 0.2 over 30k, and I3 is 0. Problem 9, MOSFET. Determine K sub n, draw the load line, and find the operating point when Vg is 7 volts. To find K sub n is pick a point. Here I chose a point like right here. Yeah, no, I picked a point right here. When Vg is 8 volts, I'm getting 7.3 milliamps. The threshold voltage about 1 volt, it's less than 2. So for K sub n, I get 298 microamps per volt squared. For the load line, the x-intercept is 8 volts. The y-intercept is 8 over r. Uh, where is that? 5.28 milliamps. Draw the load line where it intersects VGS to 7 volt volts is your operating point. That's in the ohmic region. Again, draw a curve like this. Over here is ohmic. This is region saturated. And the last problem, for CMOS circuit, circle the ones or zeros. I prefer circling the zeros, in which case they get the logic for Y bar being A bar C or AC bar. That's the low logic. So this is A bar C or AC bar. Um, and is series or is parallel. So if this is turned on or this is turned on, I'm tied to ground or Y bar. Used Morgan's law. In the Morgan's law, series becomes parallel. That's up here. Parallel becomes series. And A becomes A bar, but for peak channel MOSFETs, zero volts is true. It turns it on. Gives you a double negative. A goes to A. C bar goes to C. Uh, that's the logic to implement this gate. So that's the final for ECE 320 for fall 2021.